Whitney came up to Harvard in the fall of 1968, and I was his was his um, student host. Whitney met with a fairly large group of African American students, and at that time, most of the students belonged to the um, African American Students Association, and this was a very very uh, uh, strident period. And what struck me about Whitney was that he was immediately disarming with the students by the way in which he basically talked to them about the struggle for equality and civil rights that had preceded everything that was going on today. And not to basically say to students, you don't know very much, but rather, here's what you need to know. Here's what you need to understand, that today's movement for civil rights, for voter registration and, and equal opportunity, um, for the right to ride in the front of a bus, is a struggle and a movement that has been built on generations. And the foundation of this movement has really been built on the backs of your parents and grandparents. And in effect, what he said was, I am just the messenger of another generation who is trying to continue that tradition so that at some point I can hand the baton over to you. And in saying that, in laying the groundwork for a discussion in that way, he immediately became someone who, in reaching out to students, and to help them understand that even though he was of a di different generation, he had something very important to communicate to them. He really invited them in, and it was clear that as they saw that door opening into his life, his experience, his history, and in effect his wanting to be available to them, they were very much at that point interested in knowing who Whitney Young was and what the National Urban League was about and what it could mean for them. In those days, everybody was talking, everybody was yelling, everybody was screaming. And what struck me about Whitney was that he had extraordinary patience. And that patience was really instrumental because what it meant was that he was trying to learn by listening and by understanding what people had to say. And I think that was one of the qualities that was so disarming about Whitney because when he finished listening, he always had something very, very thoughtful to say. And it grew out of no prepared set of thoughts or remarks. It came out of the experience of hearing what people had to say and trying to, to communicate to people what his thoughts and reactions were based upon his own life experience. Time has proven Whitney right, that we now see um, in corporate America, private and public companies, um, major foundations and, and institutions that are headed by by blacks and, and, and other minorities um, that demonstrate that we are as good and frankly as fallible as our white counterparts. When he first heard the, the expression, black is beautiful, and he kind of laughed. I remember he, he sort of chortled and said, well, whoever said black wasn't beautiful? <laughs>